Hey everyone, Anthony here. So today we've been working with some pretty heavy stuff and it's all been in the script editor, which has been great for mucking around with the syntax highlighting and all just the useful stuff. But at some point you may actually want to wrap some code onto a node similar to what I did with the previous regular expression video. So let's just recap that quickly. Um, not the regular expressions, just the adding code to a node. So for anyone who hasn't had to do this, what you would do is you'd bring up your node here, you'd right click, you'd manage user knobs. This is the same procedure you do for adding any knob. So let's, let's add a knob here. So you want to go down in this case to pick a Python script button. Don't pick Python custom, that's for slightly different purposes. You can check the documentation about what that's for, but you want a Python script button, All right? So we've got a Python script button. In this one, we're just going to make it do stuff, and the do stuff is just to be printing a message to the screen. We're going to be quite annoying. So we're going to call it do stuff. Uh, we're going to call it, oh, we're not going to call it, we're going to suggest people click it. Me for awesome. Right. And then the script is the script that's going to be executed when you press the button. So nuke message low. This is obviously not awesome, but yeah, we'll see we'll see how many people click it so you hit the button comes up there's the button the name of it's called do underscore stuff and the labels actually click me for awesome and when you click it we get the thing here so anything inside this oh god there you go anything inside this script editor here uh, is going to be executed now a couple things to immediately note this script editor doesn't have any syntax highlighting uh, if I was to say print out the numbers from I don't know, 0 to 10 for number in range from 0 to 10, print number. I just want to print it to the, to the script editor console number. All right, so that, that also works. Um, for those of you who are listening carefully, here I didn't actually hit tab, I pressed space four times because when you hit tab, Tab actually inserts the tab character. All right. um, there's no syntax highlighting. Tab inserts a tab character. Uh, this is this has got all the hallmarks of just a text editor, which is what this is. This is just a container for text. So if you want to write code, you're probably better off writing it anywhere else, literally anywhere else, and copy pasting it in here. Because let's say we do this um, for potato in range one, two, seven. Nuke, uh, let's just print, print more. Yeah, more stuff. Can you spot immediately that there's a problem here? Because I sure as heck can't. The problem is there are five spaces here and there's four here and this will not work. That will, that won't. So things like that are very, 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 very hard to spot in this thing. They're much easier to spot if I was to go here. They're a little bit easier to spot here in the script editor because everything is a monospace. I, I hope you've kept it as a monospace font. Um, so you can actually see that this is slightly misaligned. It's still not easy, but it is easier. And when you execute this thing in the console, it'll... Um, why did that work? Uh, okay, that will work, but just assume it won't. Just um, keep your spaces all the same. Again, details. Keep your keep your spaces at four four units, right? So that is uh, a little bit of a pain and a reason to work in the script editor or anything else like a no Visual Studio code and copy stuff in. So your loop is almost. You bring this thing up. You, hit, you go down here. You hit edit. You change things here. Um, as you're seeing. This is frustrating and slow, so let's speed it up. Now, the, to illustrate the point, let's put a text knob on here, um, text stuff. I'm gonna be super lazy, I'm just gonna copy it all over the place. Cool, there's text stuff down here. You would expect to be able to do this without even thinking, because it's just text. Uh, let's just make it a little bit easier to see. So, nuke selected node. The node is nuke selected node selected no right so that's the no op and then we want to get the knob called text stuff the, the node no, blah, knob 
uh, text stuff, and we'd like to change the value of the text, set value to be potato. Awesome, that was easy. That's exactly the same way in which you can modify the value of this button. So we know it's called do stuff, and I'm just gonna set the value to be put, I'm gonna correct that, potato. It set it, I click it, and why is that not, why is it, what is, what's that actually done? That should be, that should be complaining and breaking. Let's have a look what it's done. Okay, it set the value potato, and I am an idiot. Uh, previously when, when setting up this video, I actually made something called potato, so that's actually not invalid Python. Let's, let's make it invalid Python. That's more like what you expect to break, uh, because that's just, for, from a from a standpoint of, of the Python interpreter, that's currently garbage, right? So you can see this is gonna be a lot quicker to do things. Nuke dot uh, message, hello, oh good, uh, okay, there you go. Syntax highlighting here is telling me, um, by the way, change that to single quotes, right? So I can set the value, press the button, notice I have a spelling mistake or something goes wrong, fix the spelling mistake, set the value, click the button, see it's changed, much quicker avoiding the steps of having to go and hunt down the knob. You can even make this faster because this knob here is a PyScript knob and it has an execute function on it. So you can just sort of make it a fairly, fairly tight loop. So there you go, hello, if I want to change it to, uh, I don't know, I've got some duck floating about curing in the fridge. Great, it's duck. So you can make very fast changes this way. If you want to start doing multiple lines of code, you'll need to start reflecting it in this thing. So let's, let's do this backwards, just so it's a bit easy to see. If I wanted to say, say duck, duck, goose. All right, three separate lines. Uh, let's also print, um, let's also print out the numbers from one to 10. Four, number in range zero to 10, print, uh, print number, that'll do. Done, you can see how painful that is. You click it, duck, duck, goose, and the numbers zero to, zero to nine, so 10 numbers. Reason I've done that is that includes spaces, it includes multiple lines, and you would have to type it here. So curious what it looks like. Let's let's just grab the no op. And you can if you if you're not in nuke non-commercial, so if you're in a regular version of nuke, it will be this stuff here. It'll be just what it serializes onto the knob as the value. So you'll actually see this is the code. So you can see it's got nuke mess um Let's let's bring let's bring that out here so it's a bit easier to read. All right, so it's got duck, then it's got slash n for the new line, so then it's got duck, then slash n for the new line, goose, slash n for the new line, four number in range zero to ten, the colon, the new line, and one two three four spaces and printing the number. So you could write like this, but as we're seeing. Uh, this is getting a little bit ugly, so let's just pop this in here. Change it from duck duck goose to duck duck and no fox. All right, duck duck fox, cool. We're doing the right thing here. Uh, this is getting ugly, so let's make this a variable. My code, my code equals same thing. So this this is exactly the same. Um, we're just going to change one thing at a time. So duck, duck, goose, fox. Great. And now we're going to make this even easier to work with. So previously I mentioned triple quoted strings as a thing. Triple quoted strings uh, will mock up your format. All right, so triple quoted strings like this. Triple quoted strings from a Python standpoint is saying, hey, anything after this, it literally is what you're typing. So this, uh, yep, and this, and 
this print uh, let's just change that to five and change that to uh, no Berkey. none of these make any sense I'm just putting stuff here so turkey goose fox and the number zero to five so if you want to work quickly if you don't have access to knob scripter which you could just grab from Nukipedia if you're just doing something quick uh, as a one shot I often would just go and do this and just type stuff in here if I have to do that more than like once or if I expect to be spending more time on it I'll actually build this setup here because there's not that much work to it and it means I can just take the code out dump it and just start typing as I think in the script editor and run this to shove it over and then do whatever I need to do I, I won't always execute it but that is a much quicker easier way to to to, to wrangle these things it's it's less like anytime you're going and doing this repetitive kind of annoyance um, it just gets boring and frustrating quite quickly so you might as well save yourself a bit of time this way right so I forgot to mention one thing it's a minor gotcha but it will occur with anything Specifically, because we're looking at shipping this to somebody else, uh, what when we ship it to someone else, you could just copy and give them a copy of the note, right? That's what you're expecting to do. But one thing is that they're not going to be running in the same nuke session as you are. Now, I'll demonstrate this by um, introducing a module called date time. So I'm going to import, we'll, we'll do it outside of my code, I'll just do it here. So import date time. And then we're going to um, print date time. Let's import that date time dot date time. Now, I, I won't go into detail. It's just going to tell us what time it is now, roughly. So you can see it's uh, the twentieth of June, about quarter to nine. Um, I'm watching a hockey game off to the side, which is why I forgot to mention this. Sorry. With date time, date time. Now you can do things like tell you what time it is now. So you can say you can start at a certain type point in time you can end at a certain point in time after I've spent some time talking and you can subtract these two values so if you do end minus start you can tell there was about 6.8 seconds while I was talking and typing so you can use it to get very primitive start and end points just for timing purposes now if you're trying to time code there are actually a lot of timing codes are a very difficult thing sometimes, but there are a lot of other ways to do it. This is one very, um, very, very straightforward. You say, if they click the button at this point in time, when whatever process we consider is done, this is the end. Subtract the two, and this is how long it took. All right. So you can see uh, I'm quite happy doing this. Uh, I'm going to take this code here, and I'm going to just shove it in the button, and it will read zero, but that's not important for this purpose. So I'm going to the same rig and then go here it's telling us zeros like straight flat zeros no time has elapsed great now I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna ship it to a uh, virtual me give me a give me a moment all right I'm back as another person um, there you go. definitely another person now so I've just given myself a copy of the node and I'm just gonna paste it inside the node graph and I've got it and if I bring it up I have the same button it looks like it's working until I press it and it complains. Now, because I've taken off my glasses, I can't read the text. Uh, right, it's complaining about the date time module not being defined. And this illustrates one of the challenges. When we go back to the other thing here, where we came from, I had imported the date time module while I was jamming away. You only need to do this once per overall nuke session. So the fact I'd done it, experimented it, demonstrated the module meant everything in this nuke session here has access to this module. However, when I go to the other person and ship them the node, they don't have access to date time unless we import it. Uh, so that is a relatively common mistake that I'll make because I'm jamming away and I get forgetful. So yeah try avoid doing that you'll need to import the code here whenever you're using it so if i did an import date time um yep that this this patched copy of the node should work all right so this this should work now so i click it as many times as i want and it's telling me zero and this also illustrates the other problem this node here the one that wasn't working now it's happy all right 
And this is because you only need to import date time or import this module once for the entire copy of the Nuke session and you're good. All right. So you might find a situation where you're using a module that was imported by someone else's custom code and you don't realize it. So when you take your node, move it to another place uh, and your code doesn't function, keep an eye out for things like that. You, you want to, as you get, for, for simple stuff, like you can assume there's always the nuke module, right? So if you're just doing things like um, turning turning knobs on and off or disabling stuff or stuff that's part of nuke, is I'm going to take this hat off now. Um, everything's pretty straightforward and there's no real issues. But when you start using some more stuff that you don't know if the target comper is used, you'll need to start thinking more in software terms like what does this node need to run? What modules am I relying on? What other software am I relying on? Okay, I've this node potentially has to make sure it is all initialized itself. It can't rely on anything else. So yeah. That is a bit of a gotcha when you're starting to move stuff between places, um, but hopefully this makes sense about what's going on. And when you see that error message come up, uh, you'll be able to um, immediately go, oh, oh, right. And as you saw, it's a relatively quick fix in this case. All right, have fun with it.